With the new Clone Wars Battle Tales comic releasing, set before the Clone Wars Season 7, many of us have one massive question. Why does Commander Wolf change his armour from red to grey? Why is Commander Wolf's helmet different later in the Clone Wars? I'm going to break down exactly why the Wolfpack and the 104th Battalion changed the colour of their armour from red to grey, and why it was also changed to a mysterious third colour in between. So before we get into it, remember to subscribe to the channel for more awesome Star Wars lore content. At the moment, only 10% of you who are watching this video are subscribed to the channel, so if you do enjoy the video, let's try to get that number just a little bit higher. After engaging in an intense space battle with General Grievous's heavy cruiser, the Malevolence, Plo Koon and his 104th Battalion fell victim to a devastating Separatist ion cannon blast aboard their own Republic cruiser called the Triumphant. The blast from the ion cannon left Plo Koon and the clone troopers floating in space with no power or communications active. Once General Plo Koon realised that his fleet was lost, he ordered an immediate evacuation of his Republic cruiser into the escape pods. Wolf. Plo Koon and the clone troopers Sinker and Boost managed to make it into one of the escape pods, being ejected into space only moments before their ship exploded into a huge fireball. Unfortunately for the group, General Grievous had managed to destroy the entire rest of the fleet, killing every other member of the 104th Battalion. Despite many clones in the battalion managing to escape the initial explosions and destruction of the fleet, Grievous sent specialised droids to hunt down and capture any clone who managed to make it to an escape pod, guaranteeing guaranteeing a total victory in the battle. In the aftermath of the battle, Plo Koon had lost three quarters of his entire 104th Battalion, forcing them to order an entirely new batch of clones from Kamino to replace the lost clone troopers. Initially, Wolf and the other surviving clones from the incident were not on good terms with the replacement clones sent from Kamino because they did not share the same history, experience and brotherhood that the old Wolf Pack and the 104th Battalion did. Despite this, Wolf personally tasked himself with training the newest members of the battalion, taking some of them under his wing, which would eventually turn into the newest members of the Wolfpack squad. Originally, the dark red maroon paint scheme on the armour of the Wolfpack was intended to represent the fierce and predatory nature of a wolf and the blood left behind after a successful hunt. After the loss of most of the Wolfpack members in the attack by the Malevolence, Commander Wolf decided to change the wolf imagery and the paint colours to that of a dark blue shade, darker than the markings of the 501st, which represented the memory of his lost brothers. Wolf was incredibly emotional when creating the markings on his armour, but knew that he had to do it to honour the fallen men of his Wolfpack and the battalion. Leave a comment down below if you prefer Wolf's red, blue or grey colour scheme. Personally, I absolutely I absolutely love the red, but the grey also does look amazing. After the change to the blue painted armour, many of the veterans of the 104th Battalion were forced to mix into new squads with shinies and experienced troopers fighting side by side. Many were even forced to create new squads of their own. After completing the massive restructuring of the 104th Battalion with a variety of new squads, the Wolf Pack reformed and Commander Wolf once again changed the painted markings for the rest of the clone troopers. This time he changed the wolf symbol to grey along with the rest of the painted markings. He also placed a depiction of a wolf on the shoulder pads of each of the wolf pack members. At this point, the wolf pack had been transformed into a unit of the most elite veterans of the previous battalion, with every other squad also carrying the wolf symbol somewhere on their armour. These new markings fostered a sense of brotherhood within the wolf pack and the rest of General Plo Koon's troopers, helping them turn into one of the most fierce fighting forces in the Grand Army of the Republic. The 104th continued to restructure as the war went on, adapting to the numerous challenges of warfare against the Separatist Alliance. This began with the troops themselves. Because Plo Koon's battalion was permanently scarred by the loss of most of its original members, each of its new members were transformed into elite combat fighters and battle-hardened soldiers, ready to lead their squads with ferocity. Teamwork between the units was stressed more than ever before, leading to long-lasting brotherhoods forming on the battlefield. Under Commander Wolf and Plo Koon's new style of leadership in the aftermath of the loss, every clone trooper had a role to play and leadership was a more important trait than ever. Troopers Boost and Sinker became serious soldiers who took their roles extremely seriously and were promoted to the rank of sergeant. 
Admiral Barton Coburn also took over as the space leader of the battalion alongside Plo Koon after Wolf's transfer into the ground forces. Admiral Coburn was respected for his coordination and strategic ability during space warfare. Following that, the battalion further adapted, incorporating pilot clone trooper units into their ranks, providing aerial support for ground assaults where needed. Pilot Trooper Warthog was one of these new members and was prepared at any moment to provide support from the air. Warthog also flew side by side with General Plo Koon on many occasions, likely including the Battle of Kato Nemoidia where Plo Koon was killed during Order 66. So that is the heartbreaking story of why Commander Wolf changed his armour from red to grey. The story of the Wolfpack and their survival from the Malevolence incident is one of the saddest but most inspiring in the Clone Wars. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, remember to subscribe to the channel and leave a like down below. You can also support me on Patreon if you want to help support me to complete the Clone Wars by animating unfinished episodes that were never released. Cheers guys, hope to see you in the next one.